seed in me. There is a seed in me. That is powerful. Come on, let's do it better. There is a seed in me. There is a seed in me. There we go. That grows in secret. There is a seed in me. That has produced. Will produce. Will produce. And continues to produce. This seed is the word of God. 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 Are y'all hear me? This seed is the word of God. 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 Repeat it again. This seed is the word of God. The seed in me is very persistent. And it is not affected by outside forces. Come on. I have been nourishing this seed. I have been watering this seed. Come on. I can't hear you. I have been feeding this seed. There we go. For this seed in me produces a large harvest. And this seed in me is the word of God. For the next 30 seconds, you got to shout a praise. Go. This word is the only thing that will keep me going. Come on, saints, let me hear you. Thank you for this word. God, I receive it. I receive this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout amen. amen. Give God a hand, come and praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to ask your neighbor, is God's word inside of you? It's God's word inside. Turn to your other neighbor. I don't feel convinced. It's God's word inside of you. It's God's word inside there of you. There we go. Ask your other neighbor. Have you been speaking to the word that's inside of you? Have you been speaking to the word inside of you? Ask your other neighbor. Have you been speaking to the word inside of you? Have you been speaking to the word inside of you? There you go, Brother Roger. Well, tell your neighbor, if you haven't, please start. Please start. Quickly. Because God is calling us God is calling to us. create the space. Create Give the God space. some praise right now. God is calling us to create the space. Amen. Amen. And God, I thank you for everything that comes out of my mouth. It only comes from you. I gladly take myself out of the way. I submit this word to you, and you're going to speak unto your people. I continue to submit my body unto righteousness and unto holiness. In the name of Jesus, let your word convict. Let your word change the hearts and minds. Let your word do what only it can do. In the name of Jesus, everybody shout amen. amen. You've got to hang on praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, isn't God awesome? Yes, He is. Isn't He awesome? Isn't Amen. He awesome? What you say? Isn't He awesome? Amen. Amen. Isn't He awesome? Amen. God is an awesome God. Amen. I really believe that this word that God has for you, Amen. Amen. Is a now word, and God really wants to teach us how to create the space. Amen. There's a lot of powerful things that go into the word create. Everybody say create. Create. Say it again. I love the way you said it. Say create. Create. Amen. There's a reason why the Holy Spirit has been dealing with us when it comes to the seeds that are planted on the inside of us. Amen. There's a reason why God has been dealing with us on how we need to nourish our seed. Amen. And there is a reason why we took a little bit more time than usual to create the space for the Spirit of God to inhabit. Amen? Are y'all hearing me today? That scripture is more than just a cliche Christian saying, but God wants to inhabit the praises of his people. Are y'all hearing me today? Amen. Well, where do you think praise comes from? Praise comes from your heart. Amen? And whatever's in your heart, the words that come out of your mouth will align with it, whether it be good or bad. If your word is in, if your heart is inundated with lack, if your heart is inundated with, with complaints, the only thing that is going to come out of your mouth is lack and complaints. Are y'all hearing what the word of God is 
we're saying today. Every word that comes out of our mouth has the power to create a space. Are y'all hearing me? It is very important that we realize that today. It is very important that God wants us to be conscious of what we put into our hearts. Because whatever is in our hearts, our minds are going to meditate on. And whatever is in our mind, our body bodies are going to follow through with it. Amen? It is so key that we as believers need to walk in alignment with the word of God like never before. This is not the season for people of God to walk around with their heads down. This is not the season for the people of God to walk around looking defeated. Are y'all hearing me today? This is not the season for the people of God to walk around powerless because we've got people out there looking for a way out. We've got people out in the open looking for a sign of relief and they're looking to the church and they need to see that there's a group of people operating in victory, walking in power, and walking in the presence of God. Are y'all hearing me today? If they look in the church and they don't see any life, they won't have any reason to come to the church. But I believe that God is bringing up a remnant of people that no matter what they're facing, they will walk around with their head up. They will walk around with praise on their lips. They will walk around with worship in their hearts because they know they serve a God who is alive and well. I guess I'm the only one that has that conviction because I've made a point. Everywhere I walk, I will exemplify the presence of God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So powerful. Glory to our God. It is so important. Amen. It is so important to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. It is so important, especially in this day and time. In this time, the year of the mouth, we are in the Hebrew calendar of 5780, which is the year of the mouth. Are y'all hearing me today? It is so important. We're under an open portal of heaven. We must be in alignment with the word of God meaning whatever comes out of our mouth has to be in alignment with the word of God because whatever we speak has the ability to create a space. Amen. 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 I'm noticing how we as human beings are inundated with the fascination of creating things. If you look around society, we have bridges and we try to create the tallest skyscraper in the world. And it's like there's a competition between nations who can build the biggest things, who can build the most fascinating things. And there was one point in time where the Empire State Building was one of the tallest buildings in the world. And now other countries have come onto the bandwagon over the past 20 years who can build the tallest skyscraper. We as human beings were inundated with creating things. Amen? It's in our DNA. Whether it be creating ideas or creating businesses or creating a safe, a safe space in our classrooms, there will always be a need for us to create. Amen. Well, you got to wonder where that notion of creating came from. That notion came from God. We were made in the image and likeness of God. We came from God. God had a ability to create things. Are y'all hearing me? Everything that came out of our mouth had the power to create. Everybody say create. create. Creating is the utmost importance when it comes to us and society. It's even in our video games. If you look at the video games in this day and age, this generation is so fascinated with the ability to create. Minecraft has been around for a while, but Minecraft has swept the imagination of this generation. Why? Because this generation is able to create their own characters. It, it, they're able to create their own worlds. They're able to create their own agenda. Because once you create things, it gives you a sense of power. Are y'all hearing me today? And the Minecraft graphics aren't really that crap. Great. But this generation loves when they have the ability to 
create. There's a new game that's on the horizon that has swept this generation. It's, uh, I forgot what it's called. It's called Overwatch, where they're able to create their own avatar and create the weapons they can use to uh, attack other members. It's a worldwide phenomenon. You play this game on the World Wide Web, you have the ability to create your own scenarios and create your own characters. We as human beings, we love to create. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? We love to create. Amen. 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 And since we are in the year, the Hebrew year of 5780, this is the year of the mouth. Everybody say the mouth. I believe that God is speaking to many of us in different ways. Raise your hand if God's been speaking to you. He's been speaking to you through dreams. He's been speaking to you through other people. Whatever form of communication there is, God has been itching to contact his people like never before. Amen. Are y'all hearing me today? God is speaking to us. He may speak to us to correct us. He may speak to us to guide us. But more importantly, in this dispensation of time, God is speaking because he wants to download strategy. He wants to give us the ability to establish his kingdom in the earth realm. Raise your hand if you are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, the reason why the Holy Spirit has been waking you up in the midnight hour, he wants to speak to you. He wants to download strategy because since we're under an open portal of heaven, he wants to establish his kingdom here on the earth. Lord, and guess he wants to, who he wants to use? He wants to use you, 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 and everybody here who's willing. Raise your hand if you want to be a willing vessel. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. God's sole purpose was to create a space, everybody say create a space, on the inside of us so that he can live and cohabitate with us. Are y'all hearing me? That's why he sent his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only person that can create a space in our hearts if we accept him. The reason why the Holy Spirit wants to create a space in our hearts is because it allows God to come in and cohabitate with us. Yes, God wants to get up out of his throne in his omnipresent being, in his power, and he wants to come and cohabitate on the inside of little old me. Even when we're in this flesh, he wants to live on the inside of us. And that's why he sends his spirit to create a space. Everybody say create a space. Create a in space. turn, we were put on this earth to create spaces in the earth realm for his presence and his glory to be established so that people can come into the, into the knowledge of who he is. Raise your hand if you want to be a remnant of people that's willing to be used by God, to be used by God so he can, he can move through you to create a space. This is why God has strategically placed you. Some of you have been strategically placed in a hospital. A lot of us have been strategically placed in a classroom. Some of you have been strategically placed on, on the sidewalk or in the mall or while you're shopping or while you're driving. God, we don't go places just to go places. An uh, idea in your mind just doesn't pop up. Well, let me go here. Well, you, if you find yourself going to a certain place every weekend, maybe there's something that God wants you to do at that particular space. Uh, are y'all hearing me today? If you find yourself in a regular routine going here, there, and everywhere, you need to begin to ask, ask the Holy Spirit. Well, Holy Spirit, why am I always here? Maybe it might be a situation where he does not want you to be there. Or maybe, just maybe, the Holy Spirit has put something on the inside of you that has not been revealed to you yet that he wants you to do in that space. Raise your hand if you want to be a vessel fit for the master's use. Amen. Everybody Amen. Say create a space. Create a space. Amen. Here's what, here's, here's what I want to point out. Did you know that we have been created to 
be co-creators with God. We have been created to create with God. Amen? Amen. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. This is what Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 declares. Amen? And I really, I know for a fact that you guys are going to be truly blessed by this. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 it says here, then God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps in crawls on the earth. Y'all, yeah, y'all hearing me today? When we were created, we were created in the image and likeness of God. We all know this, but who is God? God has, is the one that has dominion over everything. So when he created you, Debbie Hayes, his whole intent was for you to have dominion through Jesus Christ over everything you face. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? When he created the universe, he has also given us the ability to create. Everybody say create. Create. Amen. That's why when you read Colossians, everybody turn to Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 16. Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 16. If you're there, say hallelujah. Colossians, chapter 1, verse 16. Amen. Colossians, chapter 1. Verse 16, this is what Colossians declares. <clears throat> For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, Amen. things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created and exist through him that is by his activity and for him. Are y'all hearing me? We were created, amen, to be co-creators with God. Meaning, here's what I want you to understand. Our mouths have the power to create the space because our God used words to create the space we call the universe. Raise your hand if you believe what I just said. So every word we speak is delivered on a certain frequency. And if I had to put a little physics into it, every sound that comes out of your mouth is delivered on a certain frequency. Are y'all hearing me today? And here's the thing. Did you know that frequency has the ability to change the molecular structure of every surface uh, substance known to man? Meaning, if you scream at a certain decibel, and if you scream or sing at a certain decibel next to a glass of uh, uh, next to a glass cup, if you match the same frequency of that piece of glass, you can crack up and bust the glass. Are y'all hearing me? So every word that comes out of God's mouth matches the frequency of all the elements of everything in the universe and nothing but change is established. Well, we have the power to change everything that is around us if the very words that come out of our mouth is in alignment with the word of God. That means we got to watch what we say because what we say can create a space. What we say can create a space. Are y'all hearing me today? If you want to see miracles take place, create the space. Everybody say create the space. Create the space. With the word of God that's living on the inside of you. If you want to see deliverance take place, create the space with the living word of God that's on the inside of you. If you want to see healing and breakthrough, be establishing your life. Use the word of God that's on the inside of you to create the space. Everybody point to your neighbor and say create the space. Create the space. Everybody say create the space. Create the space. I hope y'all are really getting this. 
Because when I read this word last night, I took off running. When I read the word of God, my wife and my sons, they'll be sleeping and I'll just take off running. Because every time I read the word of God, it just sparks something on the inside of me. Are y'all hearing me? Why do you think the seraphims are flying around the throne room of God and the very words that come out of their mouth is holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, uh, last time I checked, God didn't want any robots to be in his presence. So I'm thinking the seraphims are there because they want to be there. Meaning there's something on the inside of those angels that caught the revelation on how holy God is. It's burning on the inside of them. Where the only thing that can come out of their mouth is how holy he is. And I'm here to tell you the reason why they sing around the throne room of God. They profess his glory and his holiness. And what they profess out of their mouth is creating the space. Glory. Amen. Amen. Glory. I say create the space. Create the space. Create the space. Mm. Are y'all hearing me today? Mm -hmm. It's very important that what we come, what comes out of our mouth must be an alignment with the word of God. Remember, we're under the year of the mouth, meaning God is aligning up so that the space, meaning the presence of God, can be created and it can go from the uh, heavenly realm to the earth realm. Are y'all hearing me today? That's why there's a living spirit on the inside of us. Our words have to be in alignment with the word because everything has already been established in heaven and God is using people to, to establish what's in heaven on this earth. Why do you think Jesus came here? And that's why his most important prayer was uh, whatever is done on earth, whatever is bound in earth will be bound, whatever is bound in heaven will be bound on earth. Whatever is loosed in heaven will be loosed on earth. We have the ability when we speak what's in alignment with the word of God. What's ever established here on in heaven can manifest here on the earth. Amen. Everybody say create the space. Create the space. Here's what, here's what I want to do to understand. Key point number two. Use your mouth to call heaven on earth. Use your mouth to call heaven on earth. Tell your neighbor you got to use your mouth you use your to mouth. establish, heaven, to establish on heaven, earth. heaven on earth. You have the ability to call on heaven so that heaven can be manifested on earth. Why do you think Jesus said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Every miracle that took place that uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that Jesus performed his words that came out of his mouth created the space for the miracles to take place. Are y'all hearing me today? Yes. His whole sole purpose was to be a perfect example, yes. letting us know that even though we're in this fleshly body, if we're in alignment with the word of God, we can walk around to every hospital and create the space and healing takes place. We can walk around to every school system and create the space and deliverance take place. I guess I'm the only one that has called this because God, God I'm on, I'm honest, God is going to use me in this season to create the space. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you notice this picture, there's nothing fancy about this picture. <coughs> it's grids and dots and marks, and it looks like it's a it's, it's like a foundation that's not yet finished. I'm telling you, when the words come out of your mouth, it forms a foundation. And a lot of times when you're computer programming, you got to do all the computer programming. In all this language you may not understand, it's like you're typing out gibberish. Amen. You don't understand what these different symbols and di these different letters are saying, but the computer does. Are y'all hearing me? And the computer establishes a foundation. Are y'all hearing me today? Please 
please don't miss this word. When we speak and the Holy Spirit, are right, y'all hear me today. When you pray and the Holy Ghost, you may not understand what you're professing, but guess what? You got a Holy Spirit that is understanding everything, that is interceding for you. And what you speak in the Spirit is creating the space. It's creating the foundation. And whatever is being established on heaven will be established here on the earth because we're under an open portal of heaven and whatever we speak will be established. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to our God. Everybody say create the space. Create, create the space. space. Amen. Amen. This is why when you Thank read you, Luke 15 and 31, this is why we need kingdom mindsets for this new time. That's why Luke 15 and 31 declares, my son said, uh, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. Are y'all hearing me? Sons and daughters, the Holy Spirit wants us to take dominion and take our rightful position Amen. in the kingdom as co-creators. Meaning when we speak in the Holy Ghost, we are co-creating. We are creating what we are lining ourselves up with what's already been established in heaven. And he wants to manifest it here on the earth. Amen. Thank you. And the Bible say, create the space. Create the space. Amen. Create the space. Amen. Man's spirit was created as a multi-dimensional uh, being. Are y'all hearing me? Giving him access to the heavenly realm. Everybody here has access to the heavenly realm. When you pray, the things the Lord shows you, he wants to manifest here on this earth. I've, I've talked to many people. God's been showing me these. God's been speaking. There is a reason why God's been revealing and God's been showing you things because God wants you to pray. God wants you to decree. God wants you to declare because whatever he showed you is already in heaven for him. See, we're multidimensional if Jesus is living on the inside of you. So you have the ability to call what's on heaven here on the earth. We call deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. We call healing right now in the name of Jesus. We call revival right now in the name of Jesus. We call the people will be set free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Everything in this seen world came from an unseen realm. Hallelujah. That's why Hebrews 11 and 1 declares, faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for and the what? The evidence of things not seen. How do we how do we make sure our faith is ignited? We gotta feed it with the word of God. Amen. We gotta nourish our seed. What has the Holy Spirit been establishing for the last three weeks? What's on the inside of you? Thus saith the Lord. It's lacking down on the inside of you, or is the word on the inside of you? Because I promise you, if you're part of ribbon of people who have been established with the word of God, whatever comes out of your mouth will be established. Amen. Praise God. Will be established. Everybody say create the space. 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 Say my faith. My faith. Let's try that again. I don't believe you. My faith. My faith is the power. Is the power to create the space. To create the space. Amen. You have to speak the word, but also you got to have faith when you speak the word. You can speak the word, but if you don't have any faith, it's like seeds going on stony ground or on thorny ground. But if you speak the word with faith, it's on fertile ground. Are y'all hearing me? So we got to speak it into an existence because it's in the heavenly realm. But guess what? Our faith gives it the power to manifest in the earthly realm. Give God some praise if you've been believing in God for some things. I'm here to tell you now, as long as you're in alignment with the word of God. Hallelujah. Whatever comes out of our mouth, we create the space. Here's another thing I want to bring to your attention. I really hope and pray you're getting this. Man, I got so excited when I read this word. 
Amen. 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 Point number three. We are not called to be hidden, but we're called to shine our light. Praise God. Are y'all hearing me? Light it up. Here's the thing. We haven't been called to be hidden, y'all. We've been called to shine. Notice why all this darkness is trying to take place around us. The enemy is trying to darken or trying to hide the space, which is the presence of God that has already been established. But God is saying he wants us to shine our light because what does the light do? The light reveals what's already been manifested. Are y'all hearing me right Man. now? When you profess the word of God, your light is shining. When you profess that God is real, your light is shining. Man. When you profess that God is still working things out despite what you are looking at, your light is shining. And when that light shines so bright, it causes you to reveal to other people that don't believe that God has already been in control. He has been behind the scenes already. And it comes and then it gets them uh, questioning where do you get your source of joy from? Amen. 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 Everybody say create the space. Create the space. space. Y'all look like y'all need proof. Everybody turn to Matthew chapter 5. Verses 13 through 15. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. When you're there, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. Matthew chapter 5. Verses 13 through 15. Okay. Amen. There's a clear distinction between the disciples and the world. Are y'all hearing me today? Nah. Raise your hand if you're of the world. Amen. Y'all have a uh, y'all are uh, y'all are listening. Yeah, we're we're not of the we're not part of the world, are we? Okay. Raise your hand if you're a disciple of Christ. Amen. Raise your hand. I'm a disciple of Christ. There you go. So here's what Matthew chapter five, and I hope you're listening on Facebook because there is a clear distinction between the body of Christ and those that just say that they're a Christian. Amen. That scripture talks about, not this one, but there's another scripture that talks about where we're in a season where God is separating the wheat from the tear. Are y'all hearing me today? I used to think that they were talking about a clear separation between Christian and non-Christian. No, I believe that's for the body of Christ. I believe that we're in a dispensation of time where it's not enough just to say you are Christian. You got to be Christ-like. Are y'all hearing me? Because there's plenty of Christian that don't operate in the fruit of the spirit and that's why you have, a, you have a bunch of people that don't want anything to do with God because when they see the people that supposedly represent God they see a mirror of themselves they don't see a change they don't see a difference amen but raise your hand if you're making a pledge they will see a difference in me there's a difference in your walk if you're a child of God you are not hanging your head low if you're a child of God. You're not walking in doubt if you're a child of God. That doesn't mean you're not dealing with doubt. You may deal with doubt, but because you but you have so much faith in the one and only true and living God. You're walking around with your head up high. You have a peace that you can't explain, that you can't control, and that's what mesmerizes other people that's living on the outside looking in. Are y'all hearing me? That's why we need to exemplify the presence of God every chance we get because you don't know who's watching you. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It says you are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its taste or if the salt has lost its purpose how can it be made salty? It is no longer good for anything. Wow. But to be thrown out and walked on by people when the walkways are wet and slippery. And that's something but 14. You are the light of Christ to the world. Raise your hand if you're a light of Christ to the world. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a, a, light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp 
nightstand. Are y'all hearing me? It gives light for all the house to see. I'm here to tell you, God is calling us to put our light on a lampstand for this whole world to see. But there are too many people in the body of Christ that are lighting their light, but they're putting under a lampshade. What's the purpose of that? Are oh, y'all hearing me today? But I'm here to tell you, God is reigniting our purpose like never before because we have people on the outside looking in. We have people that God wants us to use to bring them in. Somebody give God some praise because there's an influx of people coming into the realm of the spirit. They're coming into the body of Christ because there's an influx of a remnant of people that's willing to shine their light. Glory to God. Glory to our God. Praise Amen. Him. Amen. We were not created to be hidden, but to be a lampstand. Are y'all here today? Amen. 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 We sing and we talk about bringing in heaven to earth, but do we really understand that it is mankind's mandate? We sing these songs, bring heaven to earth, but it's up to us. Praise God. I hope I'm not losing anybody because this is powerful. Are y'all hearing me today? Mm -hmm. The reason God created man's spirit as multidimensional was to manifest his kingdom on earth. We are designed as spirit beings to not only interact with heaven, but to actually transport heaven to earth. If you want to be used to transport heaven onto earth, lift up your hands and say, God, use me to transport heaven to earth. Use me to transport heaven to earth. Glory to God. Amen. Man. You know what? And when we do that, we have the ability to break down strongholds. Somebody give God some praise. We've been put on this earth to break down strongholds, to break down ungodly kingdoms. Are y'all hearing me? Too many ungodly kingdoms are in rulership right now. We've got an ungodly kingdom that's ready to come out full blast on Thursday. Are y'all hearing me? But if the people of God are mobilized in prayer, if the people of God are ready to decree and declare and change the atmosphere, we can tear down every ungodly kingdom that's in operation. Every ungodly kingdom that's in operation against this youth. Every ungodly kingdom that is in operation against your family. I guess I'm the only one that's mobilized. I see you, Dad, because I'm here to tell you God's definitely going to use me as a beacon of light to tear down oh, no. every ungodly operation. Man. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Every ungodly yes, sir. operation. Purpose. Hallelujah. Everybody say purpose. Purpose. Everybody say purpose. 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 Everybody say purpose. 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 Everybody, I want you to point to a neighbor saying, create the space. Create the space. space. When, I, when I read this and I was meditating on this, it brought me back to that ever powerful story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me today? Mm -hmm. It was a time where King Nebuchadnezzar built this huge statue in his image. And every time the music sang, people had to stop what they were doing and bow down to the graven image. This was in the kingdom of Babylon. Raise your hand if you're very familiar with that scripture. Are y'all hearing me today? But I'm here to tell you that God used Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to, uh, they used the words that were in their mouth to create the space. Are y'all hearing me? I'm here to tell you, God wants to use us in strategic places to create the space so that people that don't believe can be revealed who's actually in operation. Are y'all hearing me today? Are y'all understanding what the Holy Spirit is saying? We live in a time, it's the year of the mouth. You gotta speak in alignment to the word of God. Are y'all hearing me? Because if you don't speak what's in alignment with the word of God, you 
know that you, you look like everybody else in this world, but somebody raise her hand if you want to be a peak in a life, if you don't want your life to be here under a bushel, but you want it to shine. Amen. Everybody turn with me to Daniel and close me. Here's, a, here's what Daniel did so powerful. Daniel chapter 3. Verses 13 through 28. Daniel chapter 3. Verses 13 through 28. This is what, this is what it means to create this space. <laughs> and if this doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. Amen. But this is going to excite you. Are you ready then? Amen. Oh man, are you ready? Here's the thing. When, Dan, when King Nebuchadnezzar found out that the three Hebrew boys did not bow. He brought the, the soldiers brought the three Hebrew boys to him. And guess what it says in 13? Then Nebuchadnezzar in a furious rage gave command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and these men were brought before the king. Verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set? And now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the uh, trigon, the harp, and all these other kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made very good. But if you do not worship, you shall be thrown once into the midst of the fiery furnace. And what God is there who can rescue you out of your hands? Look at what chapter, verse 16 says. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered to the king. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you on this point. If it is so, our God who we serve is able to rescue from the furnace of the blazing fire and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. I want to stop right there. The boy said, you already know where I come from. What those boys said that came out of their mouth, they were creating a space for the presence of God to be established. Are y'all hearing me today? And this is what happened. So, our God will rescue us from you. How many of you in here are professing, even though you're facing A, you're proclaiming God will rescue you. Even though you're fighting against B, God will proclaim, you are proclaiming that God will rescue you. God is saying Man. what's on the inside of you, because what's on the inside of you, your words will all so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had so much faith. What came out of their mouth aligned with faith? They knew what they were about to face was of certain death, but they prophesied. They were under an open heaven. They prophesied and said, my God, who is living, will rescue us from you. They proclaimed it. But here's, here, go, here goes, here goes, verse 18. But even if he does not, let it be known, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image. They were ready to give their life. They had so much faith in God. Nothing but came out of their mouth was faith. Their faith created the space for the presence of God. Are y'all hearing me today to come down? Right. Their faith created a space for God to do the impossible. And then guess what happens? Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19, was so filled with fury, his facial expression changed toward the three boys. Then he gave the command that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Wow. He commanded certain strong men of the army to make sure those three boys were tied down. Verse 20.
21, then these three men who are tied up and their trousers and coats and turbans, meaning there were extra things put on them to make sure that their body caught fire, to make sure that their body was consumed. But here's 22, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot, the flame of fire killed the men who carried the three boys. This was a hot place. Are y'all hearing me? But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell in the midst of the fiery blazing furnace, still tied up, but 24. I want y'all to read this, and I hope this ignites your spirit. I, if it doesn't, I don't know what else to do, because I'm already ready to run around this church. When Nebuchadnezzar, the king, looked, he was astounded. He jumped up and said to his counselors, did we not throw three men who tied up in the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, certainly, O king. Verse 25, he answered, look. Everybody say, look. Look. I see four men untied walking around in the midst of the fire. They were untied and they were worshiping and they were not hurt. And this is what Nebuchadnezzar said. The fourth looks like the son of God. Now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me the faith that came out of their mouth created the space for God himself to come down. Jesus wasn't even revealed yet, but it was the spirit of God that allowed a man that did not believe to see God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Did you hear what the Holy Spirit just said? What came out of the mouth created a space mm -hmm. under an open portal of heaven for somebody who detested God uh -huh. to see God with their own eyes. Their faith created a space for the supernatural to take place. Amen. Amen. Glory to our God. It gets better. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door <coughs> to the blazing furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, notice what he said. Servants of the Most High God, before he was revealed, mm -hmm. he blasphemed God. After he saw God mm -hmm. in the midst, he said, three boys, servants of the Most High God, uh -huh. This man that did not believe had no choice but to believe. Are y'all hearing me? I'm telling you, we're living in a day and time where God wants to use us to create the space for people to be revealed who's always been in control, who's always had the power. Are y'all hearing me today? Oh, oh, oh. always is orchestrating everything. This is what God wants to do. This is what God do. Praise God. Oh, it gets better. Praise. Verse 26. Praise. Verse 27. He said, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire. The sastrips, the perfect, the prefects, the governors, the kings, and counselors gathered around them and saw that in regard of these men, the fire had no effect on their body. Their hair was not singed. Their clothes were not scorched or smoke damaged. They didn't even smell like smoke. Here's the kicker. Nebuchadnezzar responded, Bless it. Amen. Y'all ain't ready. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the name of God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Amen. who has sent his angel and rescued his servants who believed, trusted, and relied on him. Amen. They violated the king's command, surrendered their bodies rather than to worship any god except their god. Amen. And when you read further, guess what happened? He made a decree if anybody 
in this city talks again against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You will be torn to pieces. Wow. You will be cut up to pieces. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Right now? We are under an open portal of heaven where God wants to use us Amen. to establish his kingdom. Amen. To establish his kingdom. Now, I'm not saying people are going to be chopped up. That's not what I'm saying. But Facebook, do you hear me? People of God, do you hear me? This same thing happened on my job. There was something going on in my job. We're still going through some things. And me, as an individual that it directly affected, they, they uh, thought that I was going to answer one way. But when I saw, when they saw that I had so much peace on the inside of me, when I began to open up my mouth and say, no, I, my flesh wants to answer this way, but let me explain to you why I have an overwhelming peace that I cannot explain. All I know is I, this is what passes by all, all of my understanding. I started to share how God took me on a mountain because everybody on my job knew that I went to Arizona and I was climbing a 2,500 foot tall mountain and they saw my picture at the top. So they already had the background story and I began to share with them what God did with me on that mountain and I began to share with them. I began to use that, that God revealed to me and I have an overwhelming peace Despite what I may go through, I'm here to tell you there's a lot of people that I share this testimony with that don't believe in God. Do you know what their response was? Their response was, man, how can I get some of that? Are y'all hearing me today? They said, man, I need some of that peace. Thank you, how can I get some of that? And it opened up a door for me to witness to Amen. one of my co-workers and tell them about the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. It was an opportunity that opened up for me to plant a seed. Are y'all oh, hearing me? Amen. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise him. Praise him. He's real. I have something. He's real. God has opened up a door. I'm meeting with someone next week. This person said, Vincent, I want to meet with you next week. I want to talk about that peace that you're sharing. I want to know how you got that peace. Man. Are y'all hearing me? Man. I'm, I'm clapping on the inside. I don't know what God's going to do, but it's an open door. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Meshach and Abednego, there was a mandate for them to bow to a God, and they verbally said no, and guess what? They had so much faith in God, they say, even if God does not save me, let it be known that we did not bow. Right. Glory, glory, glory. He's real. Notice how Halloween's coming up on Thursday. Everybody's talking about Halloween. Everybody's they can't wait to participate in Halloween. That is an idol. How many Christians on this earth is willing to say we will not bow? Yeah. There are some mandates that the government is trying to push. How many of us are willing to open up our mouth and through prayer and say we will Notice those three boys didn't say we will not bow and then operate in hate and start to bash the folks saying that they were not Christian. No, they were still in the spirit of love. Why do you think King Nebuchadnezzar was drawn to them? They were drawn by the love of Jesus Christ. It's one thing that happens when God reveals himself to you. Not 
not only do you get revealed to who he is, but through that revelation, you start experiencing the love that comes from that revelation. That's why King Nebuchadnezzar was so drawn and he was able to retract his word and say, anybody who talks against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he was gangster with it. I will have my soldiers cut you up in pieces and throw you to the dogs. I don't know about you, but that's so extreme. Let's bring that in to this day and age. Of course, we don't want people cut up and thrown to the dogs. That's not what I'm saying. But God is saying this. Are we willing to be like those Hebrew boys and operate in the love of Jesus Christ and showcase that light? Because the light will reveal the space that's already been created. That space will be manifested on the earth realm for God to reveal, be revealed to everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. And watch the miraculous thing. Praise God. Praise Lift up your hands. Father God, I've done what you've asked. I've done what you've asked. I pray your people has gravitated toward it. I pray your people has, has connected to it. And I pray your people will live it out. We will continue to create the space by the words that come out of our mouth. We will continue to be a beacon of light and be used by you like never before. I thank you and I praise you, Father God. Everybody here has the power and the ability to make sure that their words are lining up with the word of God and they will create the space in every place they've been assigned for the miraculous to take place. If you are a teacher, you better be creating the space for the presence of God Amen. to come into your classroom. Amen. We got too many young people that are killing themselves. We got true. too many young people that have identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? I'm, if you are a teacher and you're listening on Facebook, I hear what the word of the Lord is saying. If you are a saved teacher in Nashville or any part of the United States or, in, or, or any part of the world and you proclaim Jesus as your Lord, Lord and Savior, I'm giving you this mandate. You better look past being a physics teacher. You better look past being a, a science teacher, a math teacher, a sped teacher, an English teacher. God has strategically placed you in that classroom to create a space. If you're willing to be like those three Hebrew boys and proclaim who God is with the strategy that God gives you, you're going to see deliverance take place through those children. Amen. Whether it be academically, mentally, and spiritually. I Amen. decree that in the Holy Ghost. Wherever God sends you, make sure you create the space. Amen. Make sure you create the space. Lift up your hands and say, God, I will. God, I will. I will create the space. I will create the space. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and sow in this anointing. You'll feel it.